This question is a good revision of a lot of the concepts in electric fields that we have looked at so far. ON15 P41 Question 5 A charged particle is in a vacuum, so uh, somewhere far away from a conducting sphere. So you gotta tell the difference. Uh. One is a particle, this guy right here. One is a sphere, this guy right here. And we treat them differently, okay? So for the particle outside the sphere, the charge is assumed to be point charge at the center. Okay, good to know. So this particle on the right kind of sees, sees a point charge field that is coming out of this sphere. You know how to explain why? Make sure you know how to do that. So state Coulomb's law. Ah, yeah. Coulomb's law can be based on this equation. F equals to KQQ over R. Oh, Q1, Q2 over R. So you need to describe that in words. Force is proportional to the product of the charges. But if you want to be more specific, say la, product of two point charges. If it's more than two, our equation kind of breaks down a little bit because you need to do some more advanced maths. But it's okay. We are doing two point charges for now. This is the basic idea. And then you must say what is underneath. On top, you say already, down there is what? Force is proportional to that, inversely proportional to R. So you say, oh, and inversely proportional. I'm going to shortcut and say prop 2. What is R? R oh, he forgot a square. Whoops. R square. Ah, that looks more correct. Proportional to square of separation. This sounds a lot like gravitational fields, don't you think? Proportional to masses, inversely proportional to distance. So square of the separation. Two marks for this. You may have guessed where they come from. First one talks on the one on top. Second one is from the bottom. Product of two two point charges. Ah, inversely proportional to square of separation. Two marks. Now let's go move on. The sphere and particle are both positive. Oh good, that means they will repel. State the direction of the force, electric force, acting on particle P. How to draw? Ah? Okay, let's draw. This fella is positive charge on the right side. This fella on the left side is also positive charge, but I'm guessing many, many, many positive charge. All spread out on the surface of the sphere. So, they are repelling, right? If they are repelling, it means the electric force is in opposite direction. So, this particle on the right, this poor little fella, will get pushed away. It will experience a force in this direction. Electric force. Repel ma. Then the fat particle actually will also experience the same magnitude this way. Newton's third law. Equal opposite direction. I push you, you push me. KQQ over R. Same. Okay, so we, are, we don't need to know that one. We just need to know this. So the force acting on P is to the right. There are a few ways to describe it. To the right, to the east, away, radially. I'll just say to the right lah. You can go and check out the masking for different ways they talk about this. Uh, to the right, radially from, I guess from the sphere, you could say that. Because the sphere, following the feel of the sphere. Ma. State the position of P for the force to be maximum. Where is this force the biggest? Ah? When you bring this particle closer to the sphere or further away from the sphere? Think about this for a moment. If I draw the electric field, it looks something like this. Electric field stress is much stronger than the surface. Oh. So force is stronger near the surface. Oh. So if you want the force to be really strong, you've got to bring that point all the way up to the surface. Now, this is an example of how you can look at it. Coulomb's law. If I bring the charge further away, the force gets weaker and weaker until like no, pretty much non-existent. But if I bring the, the point closer and closer, Okay, the two, char two charges closer and closer. You look at the pink color arrow that appears down there. It gets bigger and bigger. Wow, the force is getting really big. And look at the graph. The force is skyrocketing. Okay, so the, the closer you are, the bigger the force. Well, this is for repelling. Lah. Attracting also the same. And if you want to draw the graph of F against R for positive, two positive charges, it's going to look something like this. Okay, back to the question. So what are we doing just now? Ah, position for particle to be maximum. So you want to be as close as possible, which is literally sitting right on the surface of the sphere right here. See this black dot I draw? Yup, you got to bring P right there to have the largest force possible. Can't go inside the sphere. Lah. Don't, 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 don't talk about that one. 
So the position will be at the surface of the sphere, where x is the smallest possible. So at surface. This is the smallest possible value of x, where x equals to r. Okay, all these are is one mark each, though, so p1, p1. Ratio, coming up next. Force on particle at, at far, far away, and... Oh, so force on particle at r, force on particle at 4r, four times further away. So r here is what are uh, Oh, radius of this shell, uh, so this conducting sphere. Why do I keep saying shell? So you need to think about force, Coulomb's law, right, this question. So f equals to kq q over r squared. But everything else is constant, right? Q, Q over R squared. Q is not changing. Q is not changing. K is already a constant. So this can be simplified to F proportional to 1 over R squared. So we can do that as our ratio. So the ratio, let's do this. At X equals to R. Eh, let me change this to X. There we go. So we don't confusion. So the first one. 1 over r square. That will be our force ratio. And then the bottom one is 1 over 4r square. Wow, so must be careful. Oh. This is 4r, the whole thing, square. Because x equals to 4r. So we're doing x square. So be careful. Oh. This will give me 4, 4, 16 r square over r square. Divide out. 16. So I just write 16. No decimal place or oh. no more. Okay lah. Two marks. First mark is from here. If you knew the relationship of f against x square, uh, 1 over x square, and your final answer 16. Okay, can now lah. Okay, next, next. Next. This part is a weird, weird one. When the charge on the sphere is this, what sphere are we talking about? The big, big one. So this is Q. The electric field strength at the surface is pretty big. This is the E. Now, the electrical breakdown spark occur when the electric field strength reaches very, very big. Uh, when a, a limit, it exceeds a limit of 2 times 10 to the 6. So this is actually what we call the maximum or the limit breakdown. EB lah. When, when the electric field becomes so strong, suddenly, pshaw, got spark come out. Have you seen the spark? Wait, I Google for you. Nah, here is a spark. Uh... This one, I guess, one of it, you have a metal sphere, and then suddenly pzz, the thing come out. This is like this la. Evil powers come out. That is called breakdown. So the air here has broken down because the electric field is pretty intense at this place. So, yeah, something like that. You can go look at some very cool pictures of breakdown of. I guess in air it's different, in different gases it's different, but we'll just take what they give us. Huh? Determine the additional charge that may be added to the sphere before breakdown occurs. So that means uh, the current charge, I'm just going to call this Q1, and the current electric field is not going to cause a breakdown, no sparks. But you need to add charge, add more charge, so that the electric field is stronger, so that it will break down. So currently it's just... I yeah, just chill here la. A few charge there, few charge here. I'm not gonna break down, no spark. Okay, and you have E one as the electric field on the surface. Then you need to add more charge such that you get E breakdown. So you want E B. Uh. If you want E B, uh, what is the Q that must be here? Hmm. Uh? <laughs> you need to do some calculation. So remember, E equals to KQ over R. Or 1, yeah, just KQ over R squared. So Q is changing. R, not exactly changing. We are measuring at the surface. So from center to here is still the same R. So actually, all you can shortcut by doing ratios. R is constant, pretty much. K is a constant. It's just E and Q that is changing for both scenarios. Hmm, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you the long method, but you can do ratios where you just do E proportional to Q. Okay, so I'll leave the shortcut here, E proportional to Q. Let me show you the long method. So long method is you plug in everything you know first of all, normal conditions. Electric field will be 1.5 times 10 to the 6. K, Q over R. I am lazy to find. Can I just leave K over R squared? Plug in the Q. 
So for this, Q is 6 times 10 to the negative 7. That will give me a K over R square value of 2.5 times 10 to the 12. Need to find radius. Ah. Can lah if you want to do more steps, but I'm lazy. I'm just going to keep my K over R because it's constant. We'll see why in a bit. So during breakdown, when you, have, when you just start to spark at the surface of the sphere, you will have E equals to KQ over R. But the nice thing is, you already know your k over r square, which is the same thing. Okay, so ah, nice thing, we know k over r right here. So let's just plug it in. So at when it breaks down, what's the electric field strength? 2 times 10 to the 6. So write that down, 2 times 10 to the 6. And we're trying to find the charge, right? Never mind, we know k over r square which is 2.5 times 10 to the 12. This is basically a long method for ratio. Lah. Okay. So that will be Q2, and that will give us a Q2 value of 8 times 10 to the 7. So if you want breakdown, you must have that, that, that amount. But we are currently only at what amount? 6 times 10 to the 7. Not enough. Not enough. So the change is additional charge needed or delta Q will be Q2 minus Q1. La. How much more do you need? So Q2 is 8 times 10 to the 7 minus Q1 is what? 6 times 10 to the 7. So you need a bit more charge. La. Then only you will reach breakdown voltage, breakdown field, whatever you want to call it. So that will be tau times 10 to the 7 Coulomb. You need this much more to reach that. So 2.0 times 10, negative 7. Wow, three marks for this whole process. Let's look at the big picture. First one is if you knew the equation, or you show that you knew the equation in some calculation, then you plug in your calculation for this one, right, to get your value of Q when it breaks down, and lastly, your final answer, A1. Okay, this whole long step is just all the ratio, ratio work at play. Lah. If you want to shortcut, you just e proportional to q, ah, yeah, then can already lah. Okay, same thing. This one you can say uh, e. Basically, the shortened version of writing it out is e over q equals to e over q. e1, q1, e2, q2. Solved. Oh, yo, like that, ah, miss. So short, eh? Yo, if you know how to use a shortcut, you can use this. Okay, so I think that's all for this question. Mm, a very good summary of. Coulomb's law, breakdown voltage in a very unusual situation of sparks. That's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.